Hello and welcome to the Big Dumb Networking Dude channel. If you've been here before, you know we do one thing and one thing only, and that is exactly what the title says. Nothing more, nothing less. Today, we're going to be onboarding a pair of FTVs into Cisco FMC, and then we're gonna be setting up HA. And that's just about it. And honestly, there's not much more to say than that. So let's go ahead and just jump directly into it. So, the two firewalls that we are going to be adding to FMC are these ones right here in this purple area, Site 1 and Site 1-2. I think it also kind of goes without saying, in order to onboard these devices within F within to FMC, you need to have connectivity to it. Uh, you know, that is going to differ from case to case, how that connectivity is established, whether they are on, you know, the same management VLAN subnet, whether you have routing in place. The biggest thing is you have to have, obviously, connectivity to that FMC. So in this situation, the FMC actually sits outside of my EVNG lab that these two FTDs are sitting in right now. Um, but within even even G I have three NICs that are exposed to them The first one is a management NIC that you know that allows us right here on this 10 11 11 to get to the management GUI The next one is a 10 12 12 network. That is what you see every single one of these management uh, Ports on these firewalls are going back to this external network. So that's how it's able to talk to FMC because that is the network that FMC is sitting on and then the third network that I have Is this one over here? It's a 10 13 13 network um, that basically is just providing internet access and Has a essentially a direct connection out to my Meraki MX which also it's like performing NAT and all the other good stuff So we don't have to do that in this lab but so that is how it is set up Let's go ahead and get one of these onboarded. The process will be the exact same for each one of these. So I'm only going to show you once and then again, that same process. You just have to follow again if you are onboarding two at the same time to be put in HA. So right here, this is the, the firewall in question. Where is my pass? And I also want to note that I did already log into this once and basically say skip initial setup. I selected the performance tier, you know, go went ahead and say uh, these are okay for DNS servers. I accepted the EULA. And then also when the device was coming online for the first time, I also set the static IP address for it on that 10, 12, 12 network. So once we're up here, We'll go ahead and sit under system settings, go ahead and click see more. And then we're gonna say central management. I should also note, obviously right now we're in the GUI. That is how we are going to configure this right now. You are also able to do this via CLI, but I find doing it in the GUI is a little bit easier and it's pretty intuitive. So there's really no need to, to hand jam it that way. But we're gonna go, you know, you're gonna get your warnings and then we're going to set proceed. So first thing you got to know, what's your management IP of your FMC? So for me, it's the 10, 12, 12, 4. You got to come up with a management key for this. I mean, for these lab environments and stuff, I usually just do a symbol. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G. NAT ID. There are some instances where you would need a NAT ID configured. I do not need that in this lab environment. I've been, I've worked in a lot of environments where this is never needed. Uh, but again, that is a case by case basis. For this, we're gonna leave that blank. That's fine for the host name, DNS server group, that sounds great. And then the interface that we're going to connect to. So on this, we're using the management interface. You are able to use data interfaces, but for this example, we're not going to, we're not gonna go through that process. And then we're gonna go ahead and hit connect. Then we should get a warning. Yep, we get a warning that pops up, basically said, hey, why this is going, don't go and close this uh, box or cancel anything. So we're just gonna say, got it. This is gonna go through the backup, you know, saving the management center, deploying the configuration. We're gonna let that run. And then we should be greeted with a window being like, hey, 
go ahead and do this on the FMC side now, and we will do that when that time comes. But I'm gonna go ahead and let this run, and we will be back in just a minute. So, we are good here on the FDM side. Let's go ahead and hop over to the FMC. So as you can see, there's that site one of one firewall. I've already added it. So we're gonna go ahead and add this one. To do that, we need to go over to add. We're going to add a device. What is the host IP of that? Should be 10.12.12.8. Let me just verify that. Yep. Display name. You can leave it as the IP and change it later. I just change it now. And I will call that one of two. Registration key, that's that A, B, C, D, E, F, G we put on e, uh, earlier. Group, you don't have to assign this to any kind of group. I already had a group set up for FTD site one HA because we're gonna be putting these into an HA pair. So I'm just gonna add it to that already. Access control policy. You do need to have an access control policy to start off and to attach to this. I've got this policy one FTDV. It's basically just a deny all. There's no, there's nothing in it at all. So I just put that on all the stuff that is onboarded and then I will make a custom policy for it as needed. Uh, performance tier, we're gonna go ahead and go FTDV 30 and then Here's what you're gonna kind of select from a licensing standpoint. I actually do have licensing for this, so I'm going to just select everything that I have and I'm gonna go ahead and click register. Once we do that, you're pretty much good to go. You do have to wait a little bit to make sure, you know, everything deploys as expected. So we can pop over here and we should see a screen pop up, I don't know, in the next minute or so that basically says, hey, we were able to register this, congratulations. And then we can pop back over to the FMC and see that it is, it is syncing up there. All right, cool. So it's already starting to pop up on the FMC side. As you know, it's got to make sure everything is synced properly. And the settings that we selected are applied. Let's see if we're good on. All right, still, it's, it's still registering. All right, cool. So we should have the green thing over. Oh, still not. Man. Got me over here looking like a fool. There we go. So that is good. That is what we want. Go ahead and hit OK here. And once it is registered, like we, we now have lost access to uh, FDM. We cannot log into Firewall Device Manager anymore. This will just eventually time out. So we can say goodbye to that. And we're gonna go ahead and just let, it's just got a couple more minutes probably of uh, finalizing and syncing here. And then once that is done, we will go ahead and set up HA. So the FMC is finally done doing its little onboarding dance. We are now ready to set up HA. You will notice that we do have some errors here, some what FMC considers critical errors, but there's nothing to worry about. It's just basically saying, hey, we're not seeing any data on your outside interface and we're not seeing any data on your inside interface. And because I'm running this in this lab environment and I have not set up BGP, Obviously, there is no outside traffic coming in. And as you can see, there's nothing back here on the inside. So it is what it is. Nothing to worry about. 
I also want to note that I did make a quick change before I kind of started recording again, and that was basically to bring this interface online. It was disabled, and being that we, I was running this in Eve, I had to just kind of go in and show you. Uh, and I gave it a name, I enabled it. You know, I could set a security zone, I'm not gonna do that right now, but I just needed to do that because that is the interface that our heartbeat and keep alive is going to be going to be traversing so without further ado yeah let's get these let's get these bad boys in ha so to do that we're going to go over here to add we're going to say high availability we're going to give it a name i will call this uh ftd site one ha we have to select the primary the primary will be the one of one. The secondary will be the one of two. Continue. And again, just a warning here that this operation restarts the snort process of the primary and secondary devices, causing traffic interruptions. So obviously if this you're not doing this in a lab environment, make sure you do have the proper air coverage. Uh, because this might cause just a slight outage of, of traffic flowing. So, yep, we're cool with that. Oh, peers have inter... Okay, so in order to finish the HA configuration, we need to not have DHCP. So I believe that is on the outside interface where that is happening. So let's go in and change that really quick. Um, that's that one. So let's go edit and IPv4. We're just going to set use static and we don't need to, we don't need to put anything in there right now. We have to save that. Let's go to our other device. Oops. Let's go to number two. And we'll go interfaces, that's that outside one again, IPv4, and then we'll just hit static. Okay, save that. And then we will need to deploy those changes, so let's deploy that really quick. Sorry, I probably should have looked at that before we started going down the HA road, but you know, that is life. That is how it goes sometimes in IT. You hit those un unknowns or those forgotten snags, but in this uh, this policy should, or this change should push pretty quickly. And then we'll, we'll get into the HA. All right, we are all completed with that policy push. So let's go back and do what we were doing to begin with, and that was setting up HA. So again, add, high availability, give it a name, primary, secondary, continue. Yes. All right, so for your high availability link and your state link, you can have separate interfaces. Um, maybe in a production environment, it might be better, or you know, you could run something like a, like a port channel, but for this, I'm going to say same as LAN failover link. So we're going to be using gigabit ethernet two. No. What the hell's he doing? I did something a little bit dumb when I was configuring or when I went in and showed you guys how I enabled those interfaces. I should not have given it a name. That is what was preventing that gig zero three from showing up in this high availability pair. So I had to go back in, I removed the name, the logical name that was associated to it and then redeployed that. Didn't want to show that in this video because again, that just takes some unnecessary time, but we are back where we were. So again, we're going to choose gig gigabit ethernet zero three. That is what's going to be doing our state link and our high availability link logical name we'll call it ha keep alive the primary ip i'm just going to give it 3.3.3.1 .3 .3 
And then the secondary IP, I'm going to go 3.3.3.2. Subnet mask, it's kind of up to you. We'll just do, yeah, slash, I think, yeah, slash 29, we'll do that. For IPsec encryption, you can enable it and we can do auto key generation um, or do a custom key. I'm not gonna do this on this one, so we'll just go ahead and click add. And that's right there. That's all it really takes. It is gonna do, like I said, it's gotta restart the snort process. There's a couple things that needs to check, but there really is no more intervention needed from this point out. So kind of a, a little bit longer video, had a couple mess ups here and there, but overall it's pretty seamless, pretty easy process to get your FTDs, your secure firewalls, whatever you wanna call them, uh, managed by FMC and then creating an HA pair out of that. And that's it. Hope you found this video helpful, useful. Maybe it helps you, you know, as you go on your firewall journey. I'm hoping in the next couple days or so I can create another video that is going to be looking at the SD WAN wizard that is within FMC uh, with the 7.6 release. Again, I can't make any promises. I do need some time to do that, but that should be coming up, hopefully, hopefully in the not so distant future. In the meantime, make sure you keep labbing and stay classy. Oh, brother, this guy stinks!